Hi, I'm Bob Spinozzi, and welcome to Littleton Common. The new year brings new hope that... Hello! Barbara, you made it! I'm back! You know that raging snowstorm outside? I wasn't sure if you were going to make it, but <laughs> just kidding, of course. Welcome back. Thank you. All yours? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for letting me sit in. Well, thank you for doing it. But listen, don't go too far, because I want to talk to you later about some of the shows that we're going to do in 2011. Okay, sounds great. All right. Well, welcome to 2011, and I'm Barbara McRae, and this is Littleton Common, and believe me, it is good to be back. I hope you'll stay with us after our announcements uh, for my guest today, who is Anne Laurie. Anne is chairman of the Littleton Volunteer Corps, and will show us what we need to have on hand during an emergency evacuation due to a storm, or maybe worse. We may not have any reason to use them, but watching the news and how people in the Midwest are stranded, Anne's emergency kits would have been good to have. But now, let's see what's going to be happening this year around town. First of all, last month we told you that the senior newsletter would no longer be mailed out and that you would have to go to different locations to pick it up if you wanted to see what was happening at our senior center. But thanks to some very generous donations, the mailing is back and you will be getting your newsletter after all. If these people were willing to get the letter to you, don't let them down. Check your mailbox, read your newsletter, and come join us when you can. One place you should try here at our Senior Center is the diner. Lunch is $2, and where can you go for that price? But here's Gail to let you know all about it. Hi, Gail. Well, hello, everybody. It's January 2011. I can't believe that 2010 is gone. I mean, it went like this in a blink of the eye, and I hope maybe 2011 goes a little bit slower so we can enjoy everything. Uh, January is not going to be a booming month like the past holidays were, but we still have a lot of activities going on. Bingo will start up um, January 7th after the loss of Dusty, as everybody knows. So on January 7th, his daughter Karen will be here to start doing calling for bingo on Friday. So we hope everyone shows up, okay? And Minuteman Senior Services will be having their January birthday on January 12th. So call me up and come on down if you have a January birthday, which I know there are a lot of you out there. Come on down. Uh, the COA provides a beautiful cake, and we'll all sing happy birthday, and you'll have a free meal on Minuteman Senior Services. The ladies' breakfast will be January 13th. That's a Thursday. Come on down. The boys will cook up a nice uh, breakfast for you. And we'll be closed on January 17th because that's Martin Luther King Day, so that Monday we are closed. And on men's breakfast will be January 19th. So come on down for the men's breakfast. The ladies will be making breakfast for all the gentlemen. So hope to see you all down, and everybody stay warm. Thanks, Gail. And don't forget to look in your newsletter for the monthly menu. Now, I hate to mention it, folks, but we are getting ready for tax time again, or as it seems, already. Tony Jasensky is back to help elderly and low-income taxpayers get their federal and state forms in order. And Tony will assist with basic forms 1040, Schedule A, B, D, and R, Forms 1040A and 1040EZ, Earned Income Credit and 2119. If you are eligible for the Senior Circuit Breaker tax credit, please bring your property tax or rent receipts and your water bill. You can make an appointment with Tony by calling 978-540-2470. These appointments are scheduled for 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Tuesday for the months of February through April 15th. So make your call now. Did you know that loneliness can hurt your health? Don't hurt your health. Get out and talk to people or just listen, but keep going. If you live alone and want to meet people or just get together to share your thoughts, then you should visit with Tina Mater's Living Alone group. The next meeting is January 20th in room 230, and that's at 1030 in the morning until 1130. And I think you should sign up now for the February Podiatry Clinic. This clinic fills up very fast, so don't wait. 
but call 978-540-2470 for an appointment. The date is Tuesday, February 22nd. But February or not, you're never too early to sign up for this. I want to make sure to thank Tina for giving so much of herself and time to the seniors who need her attention. Thank you, Tina. Concord Healthcare will be at the Littleton Senior Center on January 27th to play Diabetic Bingo. This will be a good time to learn more about diabetes and play bingo. I don't understand this diabetic bingo thing, but uh, maybe that's something on your cards. But come in and try it and find out. But if you have diabetes, you might want to know a little bit more about it. And playing bingo seems like a fun way to do it. And of course, we still have our bingo here at the diner every Friday. We did lose our caller, Dusty Crone, last month, and we'll miss you, Dusty, very, very much. But lucky for us, Dusty's daughter, Karen, has volunteered to continue his work. So come in and play bingo and say hi to Karen. Indian Hill has some great programs each month, and with us now is Evanthea Velakis with the Indian Hill schedule. Evanthea? Thank you, Barbara. We have lots of wonderful music here for you at Indian Hill this month, beginning with Russian-American pianist Sergei Shepkin over at the Kaleroscope Gallery Chamber Music Series. And that's on Saturday, January 8th at 8 o'clock p.m. over in Groton, Mass. So Kaleroscope Gallery, January 8th, pianist Sergei Shepkin playing works by Bach and Brahms and Schubert and Liszt. It's going to be a great program. You can check it out at 486-9524. Give us a call or at indianhillmusic.org for ticket information. Tickets are $25 for adults and $15 for students. Our box lunch faculty series continues in January with two shows on Thursday, January 20th. One show at 11 and the other one at 1.30 p.m. And this month, it's violist Alexander Vavilov with pianist Olga Talrose. And they'll be uh, playing all kinds of wonderful chamber music for you. And that's free on Thursday, January 20th. And then, Orchestra of Indian Hill continues its series over here at Littleton High School on Sunday, January 23rd at 3 o'clock p.m. And we have an all Mozart program. And I think we can say that most people love Mozart, so you won't want to miss this Sunday, January 23 at 3 p.m. A uh, whole bunch of ticket prices, 45, 32, 20, and this month we have a special for seniors, $15 tickets. You can come and check that out on Sunday, January 20. January 23rd, and that's 486-9524, or online at indianhillmusic.org. And our Family Pajama Jam, a free musical story hour for families, will be on Friday, January 28th at 6.30 p.m. here at Indian Hill. So check us out. There's always something musical going on here. Thanks, Eve. Like Indian Hill, Littleton Park and Rec has a very long list of programs they sponsor. So we thought we'd include them on this show and future shows so they could give you the latest from that office. Today, Chris and Connor are here to give us that information. Thank you, Barbara. So, Chris, 2011, um, a lot of things are happening in Park and Rec. A lot can of you things. Tell me, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on now? Well, coming up in January, we have uh, Fire and Ice, which is an okay. event we do every year. It'll be held at Faye Park. Mm -hmm. We're going <coughs> to flood the park in a good way. <laughs> uh, it'll freeze. There'll be ice skating. A lot of people come out. We have a bonfire. There's concessions. It's all free except the concessions. <laughs> all money goes towards the department. Uh, and, what, time, uh, what time is it being held at? It will start at 7, and it'll uh, go probably, I don't know, until 10 o'clock people start leaving. All right, cool. Uh, what about uh, Community Ed? Yeah, we, got, we got that too. Community education has well over 100 programs coming up <coughs> in the future. Uh, trips to plays, such as, uh, maybe you can um, tell me a few of the plays that we, we have, have coming uh, up. We have Spider-Man After Dark. Spider-Man After Dark. We have uh, Mary Poppins coming up. Yep. A lot more. You can check it. There's over 100. You can check them out online, register online, or even give us a call. We're more than welcome to help. Website's www.littletonrec.com. That's mm -hmm. littletonrec.com. Phone number is 978-540-2490, and I'd be happy to help personally if you call. Uh, what about in the, the months after? What's going on after that? 
in the next couple of months in the spring and into the summer, we have bunny breakfast coming up in March Kay. to celebrate the spring season, and we'll have pancakes for kids to come. There's going to be an egg hunt. Uh, we'll be having a talent show in March, first ever, so that that should be Ooh, interesting. That should be fun. Yeah, that should be great. Uh, a lot of interest in that. Are there uh, prices um, for that talent show? Why don't you say those? Oh, geez, yeah. Actually, we have um, they're five dollars for a single um, act, and if you think about doing a, like a group act, a group, yeah, you know, sing as a band or something, uh, it's uh, fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars, yep. and it's five dollars for tickets at the show. Yes. Uh, we also had that father-daughter dance, Father-daughter dance, dance right? yep. That was great last year. Yeah, a lot of people really came. Fun. Very festive. Yep. yep. So bring your daughters, yeah, we'll have cake dads. And be great. Dancing DJ. By the way, Chris, I believe the um, the fire and ice is from 3 to 6 that night. Yes, 3 p.m. Yeah. to 6 p.m. That's, okay. that's correct. Yeah. And more on the uh, talent show we were talking about earlier. Um, auditions will be held at the multi-purpose room at Town Hall. Uh, on Thursday, March 3rd, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And appointments are required. Uh, you can call the office at the number 978-540-2490 to make appointments anytime before March 3rd. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of co things coming up this year. It's going to be, um, gonna gonna be, be a busy really, year. Yeah, it's going to be a real busy year, a real fun year. Yes. And it'll be uh, real helpful if you guys, and it'll be real fun for you guys to just, you know, come to all, as many as you can. And I hope all you, everyone has a happy holidays and a happy new year. And a great 2011. Thanks, guys. Again, Littleton is full of surprises, and we hope you take advantage of everything that suits your fancy. Get up and get out. It's movie time again at the Senior Center, and on Thursday, January 27th, the movie Leap Year will be shown in room 230. Our hosts will be there serving the usual homemade treats. So get out of the cold and come to the movies. That's at 1 p.m. January 27th. The thrift shop crew is getting ready for a February fashion show. If you have been to the shop, then you know we have a great selection of the latest styles in clothing. We want you and those who haven't been in to come to our fashion show and see for yourself. We really enjoy putting these shows on and hope you'll come and join us. And the date for this is February 9th at 1 p.m. in the Townhouse Multi-Purpose Room. But look for our posters in February. You can save money, but you can look great too. I have a couple of announcements of interest here. The Department of Veterans Affairs is warning veterans not to give credit card numbers over the phone to callers claiming to update VA prescription information. The callers are misrepresenting the VA to gain personal information over the phone. They give you false information that the VA has recently changed procedures for giving prescriptions and ask for your credit card number. If you have a question about these services, call this toll-free number, 1-800-827-1000. But be careful giving out information over the phone. I'm sure that if you have a handicapped placard or plate, you already know the rules on using them. But apparently, some people abuse the privileges. So here is a reminder on what not to do. Do not display your placard when the car is in motion, and that's a $5 fine. Do not let anyone use your card parking privileges. That's a $500 fine and also loss of your disabled parking privileges and a 30-day suspension of your license and you don't need that if you have to get to important uh, doctor's appointments. I imagine this doesn't mean if you're in the car if a friend who is driving you to an appointment can use the card but check on that. Last, don't leave your card in an unlocked vehicle. You need to use that placard, so protect it and remember the rules. But call 617-351-9222 if you have any questions. Now, with all the wild weather reports we are seeing across the country, we felt we needed to show you ways to be ready for any emergency that might come our way the next few months.
and hopefully not uh, any that we have seen in other states. So today, I am with Anne Lorie, Chairman of the Volunteer Corps, and she is also on the Littleton Board of Health. Anne has brought her whole emergency kit here to our studio just to show you what you might need in case we happen to have wind, rain, or snow above and beyond the usual. Anne and Jim Garaffi wrote a shelter plan which is supported by Chief Carter and Chief Kelly. And the Little Light Department will have an introduction and orientation to the shelter plan for Littleton in your January bills. So stay with us now for my interview with Anne Laurie. But meantime, don't forget to hug a senior. Hi there. Well, today I'm here with Anne Laurie. And uh, is that right, Anne Laurie or Anne Laurie? It's Anne Laurie. Land. It's oh, French. Oh, good. I, I got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was fine then. And um, Anne is uh, the chairman of the Volunteer Corps and also on the Board of Health, correct? Yes, the Littleton Volunteer Corps or the Medical Reserve Corps. Oh, okay. And you're probably wondering what all of this stuff is here. And this has to do with the 72 hour kit. All right, so Anne, why don't you start by telling us what is the 72 hour kit? Why do we need it? And then you can show us what's in it. Certainly. Okay. The 72 hour kit is designed to get any group of people or persons through the first three days of a regional disaster because it's predicted that it would take emergency responders to get to you, it would take three days the longest if there's a regional disaster. Hmm. So the 72 hour kit. But frankly you can make it as long as you as big as you want for as long as you'd like. But these are the basic things that are in the kit and before I hit that I'd like to just say that the reasons why you need one are multiple. One, if there's a nor'easter and you have to shelter in place in your home or if there's a tornado and you have to evacuate quickly two completely different scenarios but nonetheless the same items are needed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or if there's a flood or if the po there's a power outage from an ice storm such as a few years ago the 72 hour kit will get you and your family safely through the first three days of any large scale emergency or disaster great great um, I will say I'm gonna push this ahead a little bit and say that one of the things that uh, Anne feels that you need <coughs> is this wonderful plastic container and then she's going to show you uh, all the things that you need and why you need a plastic container too, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well I store mine in two large plastic containers just like you saw. There are 33 gallon containers and that's because if there is a flood or there is a water issue going on, a water type disaster, your flood your basement might get flooded and I know that never happens around here. Yeah. <laughs> you want all of your items to be protected from water damage, wind damage, and in hurricanes water's going every which way. It's not just coming down top to bottom. Mm -hmm. It's flying all over the place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you want to have it stored in something that you can also take to your car quickly, get out of your house quickly, and that you know where it's stored. Everyone knows where the 72 hour kit is. So that if mom isn't home and you need to know where the kit is, Everybody understands mm -hmm. and knows where that is. Mm -hmm. So let me go through the details. Sure. First of all, of course, everyone needs food. And you want something that is uh, packageable, light package. You don't want heavy because you have to carry your kit very quickly. So you want um, perishable items such as um, dry cracker type perishable. You don't want refrigerated freezer type perishable items. You want protein. You want non-fat dry milk. You want protein spreads like peanut butter or Nutella. You want protein and carbohydrate bars that give a mixture of nutrients. And then you want crackers and things. They're perishable, meaning they have an expiration date, but they're light and they don't require cooking. And that's a big plus. Also, you can use packaged tuna, packaged chicken, but always pay attention to the expiration date and they're usually printed on the end back of the package. 
You can put some canned goods in yours. I have a few in mine, but canned goods don't freeze that well, so don't keep it in your car if you're going to have canned goods in yours. It probably gets heavy, too. It, and it gets a lot, it gets heavy, yes. Yeah. So again, <clears throat> snacks don't require cooking, but high in protein, good carbohydrate, and fat mix. And then, of course, for the snackers, a little bit of gum, a little bit of candy for those, just to burn off a little nervous energy. And you always want to remember, if you're going to have canned goods, you want to have a uh, can opener that is manual because if the power is out, of course, your appliances will not be working. And then don't forget the pets, whatever your pet needs. And then, of course, you need water. And in my kit, I have several gallons of fresh water, but I also store water tablets and then containers with which I can put water to be purified and I let it sit the required time. Where do you get this? You can buy all this stuff. You can buy it at REI, Eastern Mountain Sports. Some hardware stores carry some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, anywhere you can. L.L. Okay. Bean and a folding bucket for water. Very handy, especially if you're displaced and you are not at home and you have to go to a non-traditional source such as a river or a lake. Mm -hmm. This looks like something your water. that you should have in your car anyway. Yes. I mean if you were stranded someplace in the snow look how small and you didn't have your kit with you, this is a good thing. Yeah, look at that. Look how small that is. It mm -hmm. takes up no space at all, yet it expands and can carry over a gallon of water. Oh my. Just like that. Yeah, this is and great. And it's lightweight. Tells you the measurement in case you need to on the inside it has the measurement, I should say, in case you have to dilute it with bleach. Bleach is also an alternative for uh, purifying your water. Uh -huh. okay? I like that, yeah. Well, next to food and water, we have light sources and communication sources. And I have my battery run LL Bean lanterns, very handy. Just a switch, they come on, then they're off. I can carry it if I need to run to the restroom or the neighbor's house or wherever I am. I also carry a very large flashlight. It's waterproof. It has a water seal. And I carry extra batteries. Both these take size D batteries, so I have size D batteries. And then I have my radio, which is a crank radio. And if I crank it up, it will power it for up to an hour. Yeah. Uh, and it's a six band NOAA radio. To tell you the truth, my, hu my husband awesome. um, decided that we needed one of these. Mm -hmm. And he, that's the first thing he bought, was the radio that he could, cr and the flashlight that cranks. Yes, so. those are great too. Yeah. Those are really good. The lightweight ones mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. perfect. Tell me, how often um, really should you check this kit it, it, as far as some of the food, you know, being outdated, some, we may go a whole winter without a problem. Certainly. And then forget about it or something, or the next winter we need it. How many winters can we go before we have to change <laughs> things? Well, you should look at, if you're using bottled water and you're going to be carrying portable body water, you definitely want to check it every year. I check mine in the fall, okay. around Thanksgiving, mm. Halloween to Thanksgiving. A good rule of thumb is when we come off of daylight savings time to check your smoke detectors, your carbon monoxide okay. monitors, and check your 72-hour yeah. kit because I found that one of my items was outdated. And I thought, oh good, I'm glad I checked it. I can exchange it now. Okay, that's good to know. Another point of communication is everyone has cell phones now. Bring a portable adapter for your car or for an electric source if you are going to a hotel or out of state to visit relatives. Be sure to bring your portable adapter so you can recharge your cell phone. I also have a little bit of tools in here. I carry climbing rope, about 20 yards of climbing rope. It can handle several hundred pounds of weight. I can lift people, things, whatever, over a tree, around a tree, whatever needs to happen. Good. And I have my little tool set for fixing anything, opening radios that need their batteries <laughs> replaced or whatever is going on. You might need it. And then I also have a survival blanket. This is for two people. It will keep two people safe from either heat or safe from cold, depending on which side you use. Yep, they're survival I, blankets. They're waterproof. I really feel like you and should buy two of these and two of those and make sure they're in your car. 
Yes. Because this is another good thing for the car, too. Yep, these are great. Mm. I have some of this in my car all good. the time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, because it is New England and our state bird should be the mosquito, but don't tell anyone <laughs> my opinion, well, you, you want to have your um, deep woods or your, um, you want to have your off for that. Now, personal hygiene, you want to bring some paper goods with you. Again, you just don't know what you're planning for exactly. So, because disasters are that way, you never know what you need. You want to bring some toilet paper, paper towel, some dishwashing soap, or at least the little packets you can, you, that you can dispose of for hand washing to keep your hands clean because that's one of the ways that you transmit diseases is from your hand to mouth. And in a disaster, you never know what is going to happen, especially if your water has been compromised and you are using alternative water sources and you're living in a tent or you're you know, not living in a uh, structured environment, then you want to be sure that you can cl be clean, your hands can be clean, your face can be clean. So we have white ones, I have soap, and then I have a personal toiletry kit that I carry has everything I need to go. I have an extra set of eyeglasses. And I have my medicine. Now you all know I take Lipitor. So there you go. <laughs> you want to have that. Your prescription, Who doesn't? <laughs> your prescription meds and your non-prescription meds too, such as if you take an antihistamine and you need it seasonally, be sure you have all of your meds and the meds for your pets too. Now one thing I forgot to mention over here under lighting, which is really good, light sticks are real fun. They're popular with kids, they're great with parents, you're trying to get your kids calmed down, maybe you're in a tent, maybe uh, there's no power in your house. Just give the kids one of these, let them read a book, whatever they want to do. It's a, it's a good um, uh, way to get them calmed down as well. The other thing that you want to do is you're going to have to copy all of your legal documents, your passport, your driver's license, credit cards front and back, health cards front and back, and all other documents that are important to you. Maybe if you're married, a marriage license, birth certificates if you have those. Because if you have to leave in a flash, and I mean as quick as you hear the siren from the fire department, it's a tornado, you throw your 72-hour kit in your car if you don't keep it there already, and you get your kids and you get out. You want to know that if you have to leave and your house is destroyed, you've got your insurance information and you have all the necessary documents that you can get health care for your kids in a different state, you can get by for a few days up to a few months if you absolutely need to. And you also want to bring with you your pet vaccine records. So be sure those are included. For every person in your family, you're going to want to have a set of pajamas, underclothes, and outer clothes per season. And I change mine out with every season. This is my winter set. These are my daughter's pajamas. These are her outer clothes. It's fleece. I usually pack mostly fleece, except for a few undergarments. Might be cotton, such as a t-shirt, underwear. I also pack some fun little games, entertainment, little you know, books, things that she might want to play with. And so I have a set for her of underclothes and outer clothes, depending on what the season is. And then I have my clothes. Again, fleece or polypropylene. I have a Gore-Tex rain jacket. And I have my hiking, walking boots because you just never know. You never know where you're going or what's going to happen. If it's a tornado, if it's region-wide, and you're evacuated to New Hampshire. Or if it's a flood and it's only town-wide, you're going to go to a friend's house. You just don't know what's going to happen. So you want to be prepared. This is a tarp that you can put around a tent or near a tent. I also recommend, in addition to what's on this table, a um, portable stove, hiking, campers, cooking stove, and a tent and sleeping bags. And this is a fleece sleeping bag. It would not be for winter use, this would be for summer use. But it can also be used as a blanket because it's a zip up but it's multi-use. I see <coughs> something else over here that I guess you <laughs> probably <laughs> want to take with you. <laughs> yes, what you want is you want cash but you want small bills. You don't want to be bringing hundreds of dollar bills with you. 
but every um, 72 hour kit should have about hundred dollars fifty to hundred dollars per person in your family oh. because if the electricity is out or if the infrastructure is destroyed then the banks are down the ATM machines won't be working and you have to take your family to a hotel out of state you don't have your um, your credit card because it, gee it was in the house and somehow it got left you want to be able to pay for food and housing for a few days if you need to and it's always good just to have it because even if you don't need it you know what you know that it's there just in case and let's see if I forgot anything. Well, oh, I'd like you to show this because okay. I thought that was quite All right. interesting. <laughs> the Boy Scouts had this at the holiday fair. I bought one because I thought it was so proactive and very good. It's about eight yards of, of rope. It's, um, I guess it would be like, like rescue suspension rope. You could put a bucket in a river and get water out. You could help a person across a creek or keep up a clothesline at your tent city if you were displaced so in other words this must oh, oh you unbraid this you open it up mm -hmm. and it'll be eight feet long and, and you could wear this eight, bracelet eight yards long <laughs> I think it is because it does match your outfit right now <laughs> maybe it's eight that's not eight feet maybe it's eight no I think it's like eight yards but anyway you start right here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I just thought it was so neat because all you have to do is clip it on you don't even have to think about it. You could wear it when you go camping or you go hiking or yeah. whatever you do, and it just fits. It looks like you'd want. I'm having to a hard time getting it on. <laughs> that's right. It looks it like you might. Like that. You know, want that. Another thing that you might want with your folding bucket and uh, mm -hmm. you know the blankets. I also like these lights, the light sticks. I'm actually. You're making me fill my car up right now. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm thinking that in the winter you're never quite sure you know like the people out in the Midwest who were stranded how many hours in their cars exactly these things some of these things would have come in handy then too well let me so. tell you what you probably should have in your car you should have a first aid kit a blanket change of clothes sleeping bag things like that right. as well as extra water and um, first aid items other than a first aid kit if you if you need them good and, winter and some food some dry food yeah because if you do get stuck then you want to be prepared to handle that because Absolutely. that could happen here too so was there anything it looks like we've touched almost everything is there anything that you think oh you have matches here mm-hmm you have matches waterproof waterproof matches, matches. you don't idea. always use those these days yep everything is nice and Container and crank. this must fit in two containers. It fits in two containers, okay. yes. I fit it into two, and they sit in my basement. I know exactly where they are and right. can haul them up in a second. Right. So, so don't go piling things on top of it, and then you don't know where they are. <laughs> That's or, right. <laughs> or, or put them in the garage like <laughs> I have. And, and have it very well labeled so everybody knows what it is. It has yeah. my last name, and then it has what it is. And this is also on the main body of the container. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you have to customize it for your family, for your needs. Obviously, we don't have a peanut issue at our house. So <laughs> right. that would have to be accommodated for. You have to pick your granola bars. But if you stick to zone bars, various types of, of granola, as long as it has a good protein-carbohydrate mix, mm -hmm. and it can keep your body going and and keep everyone satisfied that's right. the important thing and pick things that people like yeah and cereals are always a great thing a, a mixture of a granola a grain a nut excellent okay well I really appreciate you coming today and showing this to us you're welcome um, you know uh, this is something that I guess every so many months or years we should bring on the show just because we want to remind people there is a possibility that you could have a problem and you might need all of this good stuff. So make up your kit, get yourself a plastic bucket and make up your kit and don't forget all these things. Watch the show a few times so that you can catch <laughs> <laughs> exactly what Ann put here because there is certainly a lot. And like I said, you might find a few small things that you want to put in your car too, just in case we're stuck in a storm or there's an emergency where we have mm -hmm. to evacuate. We hope it never happens, but you never know, do you? So take care of yourself and your family, and um, we'll hope to see you again. Thank you so much, Barbara, for your time. Glad you came. Thanks. Thank you. Well, how's it feel to be back?
It feels wonderful. You sounded great. Good. Nerves of steel. You weren't nervous <laughs> at all? No, no. I was just a little nervous. I might be a little scratchy, but I think that uh, it's coming no, along. Fine. Yeah, You're that's fine. all. But uh, I thought, you know, it would be great for us to tell our audience, um, you know, things that we're planning for 2011. I have one thing that I'm actually working on right now with um, Lake Manawanaki. I'm going to do a, a show on the lake itself, but actually the whole lake going around into the, the Westford side as well. And we're going to talk about some of the uh, businesses that were in Forge Village on that side, uh, the old Abbott Mill. Um, the printing company that was there, and then we're going to swing back around to our end and uh, talk about what uh, what's what's been happening in you know in Littleton on Matawanaki. It's 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 fun. Yeah, I've got to do some more research on it, but I think it's good too because you do a lot of research on your shows, and um, <clears throat> I feel like we learn so many new things. Yeah. It, it, and one of the things that I learned was about Matawanaki being called one thing on one side and another <clears throat> name on the other. Well, it was, it was called Forge Pond originally, and a developer went in after, sometime after World War II, and he wanted to sell lots and build houses, and they weren't selling. So he was uh, told by several people, hey, get something a little more sexy there. So they came up with Matawanaki. So that's <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sexy. Except or in, for the Indian, fact Indian, rather. Right? Yeah. Indian I was <laughs> Because if you live there, it's like, how do I spell this? Right, right. <laughs> I, don't, don't ask me that, by the way. Right <laughs> don't ask me because I tried it one time and they laughed at me, so I'm not going to tell you how I spelled it. But, um, yeah, and... Uh, well, you've got something coming up uh, that pertains to your military background a little bit. Yep, yep. We have a couple of shows <laughs> coming up. Um, one of them is that we're going to do something on the Fort Devens Museum, which I think is great. Um, and, yes... Uh, I have actually my husband interested in that one too because of us being we were stationed there. You were stationed there. Mm -hmm, we were stationed there, and uh, so you know we took that little tour of it and thought this is really neat and maybe people should know more about it. And it is close to Littleton, so we're kind of branching out a little bit more with you going to Mattawanaki and Forge Village and me going over to Devons. So in spite of all the new businesses in Devons, Devons there is a. A museum that's separate, dedicated to the old Fort Devens itself. Right, and there is uh, there are reserves there, so it makes sense to have something like that there, and hopefully they'll be able to keep it going. That's the problem, you know, keeping this museum going because the people that are building around there are thinking, why do we have a military museum? It's history. It's history. It belongs there. Fort well, Devens was there. Uh, they have a real long and honored history, too. Right. Uh, going back to World War I. <clears throat> so that's going to be kind of fun to do, and I think interesting for, for a, a large group. And because, uh, you know, I talk about this every so many years or months or whatever, that uh, I don't know if I inherited it or whatever, but my hair is thinning out and, I, and it bothers me a whole lot because you don't, women don't need this, you know. But... Um, at any rate, I'm going to do a show with a beautician. On, once before, I did one on extensions, and everybody seemed to I like that. I remember that one, actually. And that was fun to do. This time, it's going to be on pieces, wiglets and wigs, and uh, helping it look fuller and, you know, a little better. So I'm looking forward to that one, too. And that'll probably be before our fashion show, so okay. somewhere in there. Ask them if they have a, a male counterpart that might... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you bore mine if oh. I get one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, but really, it is hard, <clears throat> you know, on women because uh, there's a little Just vanity is. sitting there, you know, and... Um, it's important. But anyway, uh, so that's just a couple of things that we're looking at, and, and, and you're doing even more shows. And uh, so... Congratulations. If any of our viewers can think of something that uh, true. they that think would, would uh, be, a, be a good fit, uh, by all means, call 978-486-9079. Leave a message with Mark Corey. Yeah. Help us out a little bit, because we do run around looking for things but it's good to hear from other people too you might have an idea that uh, in fact yes i did get an idea from someone i was at a party and someone wrote up something they thought should be um done and we're looking into it okay. i won't tell you what it is right now it's a little surprise but we're looking into that she's probably watching yeah i hope i, I let the cat out of the bag i said she like <laughs> that person well anyway so you know stay with us and um 
watch us every month and uh, help us out a little bit and enjoy the shows because we enjoy doing them. Thank you. I hate to mention it, folks, but we are getting ready for that tax time. Oh, hang on, we got to start again. That was too close. Stop talk. leaning in. Stop what leaning in. Do? Don't talk back away. But don't lean into me. But I'll look at you like this. That's fine. Yeah, that's good. And Get, then I'll look back at the camera. Try to smile. Don't try to do that here. intense, scary look you're doing. <laughs> now, I, first time. I don't think this has ever happened. Okay. <laughs> so, Chris, um, tell me about Fire Nice. Fire Nice is an event we do every year here at. A lot of events coming up. I don't. I don't like. I'm hard to drag. Of January, it's going to be kind of a slow month, but we still have a lot of activities going on. For the women, the um, Minuteman's bre breakfast. We're going to have to start all over again. I have it written in front of me too. <laughs> okay. Good lean. Do the lean because I'm the doing the cross. Nice, right? This is nice. I right? like the lean a do lot. Feel, do you feel like this is the good, like a good connection we've got here? I love it, dude. Okay. Barbara, what's going on with the camera? What's going on with the camera? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay, all right. That's a good tripod. <laughs> what about the, uh, what else do we have? Ah, uh, jeez, uh, so, um. And make sure, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. We ran out there. <laughs> Oh. Uh oh. Oh, I see, oh I see what it is there. I'm sorry. And I uh, hope all you, everyone has a uh, happy holidays and a uh, happy new year. And a great 2011. <laughs> Start talking afterwards. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm not fired yet. Is, are they going to continue my contract? You've been re-signed. <laughs> <laughs> the older mister. This is kind of tangled up in you, so be careful.